for today, I'll discuss how creating a HUD works in Unreal and some of the basic uh, know-hows of the process. All right, so creating the HUD, the first thing, of course, is to kind of get the right look for it. So it assumes this screen width here. You can change it with the screen size. Right now, it's pretty much set to just a standard monitor. There are a bunch of different options, DPI scaling, of course, and all that to kind of change it to the way you want. Typically, this doesn't matter as much as long as you have a targeted platform you want to go to. So if it's a computer and it has the typical aspect ratios for any HUD, the HUDs could differ. So what you do is you anchor everything to the center of the screen so that whenever you load the game, the positioning, while yes, it looks at the overall screen as we show here in the, in the highlight in blue, but what it does is it kind of identifies the center of the screen and then positions it from the center. So there's no fear of a different aspect ratio if there is a different one. To create all these, it's pretty simple. You're basically just drag and dropping in everything you need, progress bars, you know, text, check boxes, buttons, and all that stuff. Now, of course, the question becomes, how do you give functionality to a text block? Because they're just static, right? So what you do is you bind a function to it. Uh, under content, you can bind a function. Now, this isn't the most efficient way of doing it, and I recognize that myself, but it's the simplest way of doing it. When you create a binding, of course, you're basically uh, binding a function to this text block. So right now, let's look at the currency function. Everything contained between the function node and the return node is the function itself. So when the function is called, what we do is we cast to the first person character. A cast to node in UE4 is a very common node to basically check if uh, the thing you're referring to exists or not. So if you cast to the first person, you're asking the engine, does the first person exist? If you're casting to like a static mesh, you're saying, does it exist? But then the question becomes, how do you check if it exists, right? So you use the object uh, reference here to check it. We make sure that as long as the player exists, this cast will always succeed. If it succeeds, then complete the return node. Now in between the cast and the return node, we're getting the currency variable that's built into the character. So built within the character itself, you have a game currency variable right here. Uh, it's set to be an integer, of course, and ticks up given a function. Whatever it is, based on its function, we're converting it to a text. And from the text, we feed it back into a return node. That return node would then feed it back into the text. Before I said, I recognize that it's not very as efficient because whenever you bind a function like this, it's essentially running on a tick. It continuously runs this function, even though you don't really need to run it every second, right? Let's say you bind picking up an item to increase the currency by one. But because this uh, event is constantly being called, it's constantly going through the function, even though you only need to call the function whenever you pick up the item. So what it does is it causes unnecessary memory bloat on the system. In the future, once everything's cleaned up, I, I might have to overhaul this entire thing to remove the binding. But for now, because the experience stuff isn't that content compressed, having something like this will still work. But you know, keeping in mind that even though, even I admit that this is not as efficient, but it works. So, you know, we'll see.